Okay, so in front of us is an Alienware Area 51M. This laptop unfortunately suffers from the uh, no power symptom, as in if you plug it in, nothing happens, and if you press the power button, nothing happens, and you won't even see the charge lights. Typically speaking, I would try to show you this, um, but in this case, that would be a very bad idea, as this laptop has actually already been on fire, or so I'm told. Anyways, in this case, we're, we're gonna go ahead and open it up, and hopefully it'll be a fixable laptop. Okay, now that we have the laptop disassembled, let's go ahead and take a few measurements. So first things first, um, you may already be able to see the uh, burn damage. It's actually um, a bit obvious due to the fact that the board is a little darker in this area, as you can kind of see. And worse than this, we actually have two sources of shorts. So we have these capacitors that look pretty awful here, as well as these capacitors that look pretty awful over here. Anyways, so I have a suspicion that on top of those two being dead, we might even have problems with... Um, the power input MOSFETs. So one common problem on a lot of these Alienware Area 51Ms is that one of the power stages on the graphics card will die, typically um, on these 2080s, not the 2060s like you see here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take off this cable. Before we do that, let's take a measurement. So, okay, so first things first, we're gonna check for a short on these inductors here. And as you can see, we do have a short, but we don't know if it's from the graphics card or the board. So we're gonna take off this cable like this and then check again. Nothing. In fact, if we check it in resistance mode, something very high. So anyways, whatever it is, it's definitely not short. Now, if we go back and check on our shorter 19 volt rail, still have a short. So first things first, let's take the board out and let's go ahead and take the um, graphics card as well out, as well as the burn capacitors. I have a feeling, like I said earlier, that we'll have more damage, but we need to be sure. So my guess is that there's been an inrushing of current. Hence, that's why the uh, capacitors have died. Anyways, let's go ahead and take it off, um, replace the capacitors, and then take a few more measurements just to be sure. Okay, so with the board disassembled, the obvious problem, of course, is the two capacitors, but unfortunately, there's actually a bigger problem with, with those two being the uh, symptoms. You may be able to tell that we actually have some pretty severe burn damage in this general area, so this power, st so MOSFET is definitely dead, that current bouncing transistor is definitely dead, and that's a dead capacitor, dead capacitor, Oh boy, this is not looking good. Anyways, it look, looks like I'm gonna have to start drilling into the board, but first let's try to take those components off and get a better assessment of the damage. Okay, so first things first, we have to take off these two capacitors and then we have to verify that the MOSFETs themselves are okay. I'm a little worried about them, but they should be good, I think, I hope. On second thought, we'll just replace them anyways. Why the hell not? Anyways, let's get started and take off those two capacitors. As you can see, it's actually burned through the first layer, and that is the board under. There's not much charring. It is a bit filthy, but this is not any major damage. We can put a uh, capacitor on the other end, and then solder a wire to the capacitor. Yep, so we'll just take off a bit more of that copper, and then we should be good. And you can tell it's really weak, because I can use my tweezers to cut it off. Like such. I have to say the components do not look good around this area. Notice how um, those resistors look a little darker than usual. Intersil 95338H. I'm gonna guess that's probably the controller. Anyways, if it is, we'll just replace that as well. Anyways, let's take these three components off. And while we're at it, that transistor definitely is not looking very good. Okay, as you can see, we have yet more damage on the other side. This is uh, definitely not good. There's some very heavy board damage here. I'm probably going to have to start drilling into some of these components. They've likely fused the board. So we're going to replace... Well, first we're going to take off those two, these two, um, this, this, and definitely those two. They're probably okay, but they look kind of burned. And that should be good, actually. This part's surprisingly dirty, but that's probably just dust, whatever. Anyways, let's get started. Anyways, look at this end of this MOSFET here. If we try to lift it, notice how the entire board lifts, and that's because it's fused to the board. So anyways, that's... Okay, this one will come off pretty easily. Yep, that can piss off. You can take uh, these two off, no problem. I think. Oh boy. Uh, okay. That's not good, but that's kind of expected. Uh, okay, that's not good. Let's take this off. Oh, that's nice. Let's take these two off because it looks easier. Okay, let's start with our problem components. Starting with this here. Ah, there we go. 
Yep, fuse to the board again. But not completely. So as you can see, most of the board is still here, though not sure if I would want to use it to deal with this and then we should be... Oh boy, that's definitely fuse to the board. Uh, fuck. Yeah, that didn't work oh. out. Almost, but not quite. So... What about dremeling it out? Yeah, I'll have... Are you putting yeah, the pad down? It's too late. I'll just rebuild the pad. Okay, despite how much burn damage there was, it is pretty much surface level damage. You know, we can see that it's not... It's not really past one layer. I think there are bits where it has gone past the first layer. But in general, this is a... Yeah, this is generally just one layer. So this, I was thinking about reusing it, but honestly, it's just too cooked. We're just going to tear it off. Uh, kind of a shame, but that's just how it goes. So let me go grab my knife. Okay, so as you can see, I've cut away at the board for the most part. Anyways, so I can take a guess as to what's gone wrong. So as far as I can tell, the um, MOSFET either here or here died first. And I think that's what's killed the uh, capacitors around this general area. You see this a lot, when a component goes short, it pulls so much current that it kills the capacitors. Um, if you want to know what's happened here, I just... I drilled away the uh, PCB mask so I can solder it, solder to it later. As for why it's died, I can take a guess. So if we turn over the board, if you notice this uh, NSL 95338H, notice how it's a bit darker than the other? And also the components around it just look in general worse, like those are uh, this zero ohm resistor here. Notice how at the end it's, uh, well, purple and not, you know, clear like um, this? Well, if I had to guess, I would say um, maybe this, just, this general area of the board has undergone more heat. Maybe due to a faulty NSL 95338H. Because I'm replacing all the MOSFETs, I'm also going to replace um, this as well. I have to double check these components here against a um, known reference. But this one should be good. So this is the one that controls the um, power stage, sorry, not power stage, the MOSFETs that caught fire on the other side of the board. So, anyways, like I said, I think our real problem is um, this chip, as well as maybe some of the external circuitry. Okay, so at this point I've uh, replaced all the components that I want to replace, as well as rewired everything that I want to rewire. We are more or less done. I'll be the first to admit that this is um, not pretty. You know, board repair seldom is. If you're a board repair technician and you actually repair boards, as opposed to just, you know, replacing components, then you'll probably be used to a site like this, as um, burn damage is typically uh, not the kind of thing that you can make look good again even if you do get everything working. But, like I said, um, I replaced everything I want to replace and rewired everything that I want to rewire. This will work. And at the end of the day, the owner will have a working laptop, which is what actually matters. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, put it back together and test it. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, I did check for shorts. They're all gone and all the components should work. Anyways, let's go to testing. Okay, so unfortunately we're not quite done yet. So we want to now check this particular MOSFET here. First, we're going to check the actual input source, which should be 19 volts. 19 volts. So this would be pin 1, 2, and 3. Now, checking the gate, again, 19 volts. But checking the output, 3.5 millivolts. Let's go replace it. Okay, so unfortunately, I had a bit of tunnel vision when recording and repairing this laptop. So let me explain why 19 volts at the gate and the source 
implies a dead MOSFET in this case. It doesn't necessarily imply it. In fact, I would argue that you need to check more, but for this case, it is true. So the MOSFET in question is actually the one you're looking at here. So the reason why you have 19 volts on both the gate and the source is because on our faulty MOSFET, the gate and the source are shorted together. Because this is a P-channel MOSFET, there has to be a voltage difference between the gate and the source in order for the MOSFET to run. But because the gate and the source are bridged together, it, there'll never actually be a voltage difference because the transistor that shorts the gate to a lower voltage can't short the entirety of the uh, 510 watts coming through the two AC adapters. I should also note that in general, don't power on a laptop if you suspect a problem with the input MOSFET. What I should have done in the video was just check the resistance between the gate and the source while the laptop was off, and that would have given us about 3 ohms, in which case we could have very easily just assumed that the MOSFET itself was dead, and, and then of course use that to replace it and get a working laptop. Anyways, let's get back to the video. Okay, so I replaced the input MOSFETs. If we now check for voltage um, after the MOSFET, which we can find at this chart resistor, we have 19.6 volts. So yep, it was just the input MOSFET as well as the course. Um... Anyways, now we're actually ready. Let's go ahead and put it back together and then we'll test it. Okay, as you can see, the laptop now worked. It's been running for about um, eight hours now, actually. If you, for those of you wondering, it's um, Sunday as of filming. I don't, I don't work on Sunday, I just test electronics and 8 hours is more than good enough. And as for the repair itself, um, it is actually just burn damage unfortunately, not you know diagnostic heavy, but it is real board repair, not just comp replacing components, you know, the actual like repairing the board board repair, which despite being rather ugly is at least a happy ending. You know, the owner can use the laptop again and you know, get a few more years out of it. Otherwise, if you have a broken electronic you want to send it for repair, I have a website linked in the description. And thank you for watching, and hopefully I will see you all in the next one.